What an incredible, insightful study, which will open the door in reference to omega-3 supplementation, not just as an anti-aging type supplement, but also a reduction of cortisol stress, helping keep telomere length from being shortened due to acute stress, and as well to looking at the anti-inflammatory proteins uh, that can be maintained in reference to supplementation of omega-3s. Now, before I proceed, this is really, really a clean cut, easy to read through study. Everything is gonna be basically in the public release. We will make reference towards the abstract, and of course, I'll always include the link to the DOI citation. And also as well, a question many will have, is the ratio between EPA and DHA that they utilized in the supplement for the study itself, which is not obviously necessarily in the full published study, but in the supplemental information, well, I should say it should be in the full study as well, but the supplemental information, which is easily linked in the abstract itself, which gives you the proper ratios between the EPA, DHA, and other fatty acids as well. But without further ado, let us get right into the research as follows. It is clean cut, so please forgive me, but I'm basically going to be narrating through it without interjecting too much publisher bias. But to proceed as follows, omega-3 supplements do double duty in protecting against stress. Study finds high dose of fatty acids may slow cellular aging. A high daily dose of an omega-3 supplement may help slow the effects of aging by suppressing damage and boosting protection at the cellular level during and after a stressful event i.e. in this case it's something very similar to a pop quiz but to proceed as follows researchers at the ohio state university found that daily supplements that contain two and a half grams of omega-3 polyunsaturated fatty acid those ratios of course will be including the supplemental information which the researchers were kind enough to link in the abstract the highest those tested were the best at helping the body resist the damaging effects of stress. We're going to proceed a little further down into the public study itself to proceed. Earlier studies showing that omega-3 supplements altered a ratio of fatty acid consumption in a way that helped preserve tiny segments of DNA in white blood cells. Those short fragments of DNA are called telomeres, which function as protective caps at the end of the chromosomes. Telomere's tendency to shorten in many types of cells is associated with age-related diseases, especially heart disease and early mortality. In the initial study, researchers were monitoring changes to telomere length in white blood cells known as lymphocytes. For this new study, the researchers looked at how sudden stress affected a group of biological markers that included telomerase, an enzyme that rebuilds telomeres because levels of the enzyme would react more quickly to stress than the length of telomeres themselves. So it makes it real easy for them to measure the telomerase levels in response to the acute stress. Because telomerase levels decline, that obviously implies that the telomeres are less likely to be able to be in a state of repair or repair as easily. Proceed. Specifically, they compared how moderate and high doses of omega-3s and a placebo influenced those markers during and after an experimental stressor. Study participants took either 2.5 grams, remember this study went for about four months, or 1.25 grams of omega-3s each day or placebo containing a mix of oils representing a typical American daily diet. After four months on the supplements, so they took the supplements each day for four months, two and a half grams, 1.25 grams, or placebo. After four months on the supplements, the 138 research participants aged 40 to 85 took a 20 minute test combining a speech and math subtraction task that is known to reliably produce an inflammatory stress response. So yes, tests I guess can age an individual or contribute to it, but to proceed, only the highest dose of omega-3s helps press damage during the stressful event, i.e. pop test, when compared to the placebo group, lowering cortisol and pro-inflammatory protein by an average of 
and 33% respectively. So, the stress hormones, 19% lower. The pro-inflammatory protein, pro-inflammatory, not the anti-inflammatory one, but the pro-inflammatory, 33% lower. Remember, this is an amazing study because you think about it, this is not something you have to wait years to yield a benefit. This study was four months on a daily level of two and a half grams to 1.25 grams intake, even though the best benefit was at 2.5 grams, obviously, as quoted in the study, a day for four months yielding this particular outcome. But to proceed, this next part is most amazing. Here we go. Research, research, results from blood samples showed that both doses, the 1.25 and the 2.5, of omega-3s prevented any change in telomerase levels or protein that reduces inflammation in the two hours after participants experience the acute stress, i.e. pop dust, meaning any needed stress-related cell repair, including telomere restoration, could be reformed as usual. So basically, boom, pop quiz, test, driving through traffic, any sort of immediate stressor, just rolled right over it at a consumption of 1.25 to 2.5 grams per day in reference to telomere repair. Obviously, to get the cortisol levels and the pro-inflammatory markers down, that was at the 2.5 grams per day needed at the highest level. But here's the interesting part. How did that compare to the placebo group? In the placebo group, those repair mechanisms lost ground. Telomerase dropped by an average of 24%, and the anti-inflammatory protein decreased anti-inflammatory protein. Notice the differentiation. Anti-inflammatory protein decreased by an average of at least 20%, which actually makes me feel quite sad for the placebo group because, wow, that had to hit him hard. But again, here we are, the abstract. Full studies not published, but in the abstract itself, from basically a kind of light way, you can get the information that you need towards the bottom of the abstract is the supplemental information. The first section of the supplemental information will yield you the ratio of, they didn't mention any particular brands or anything like that, so they kept it clean. The ratio of the EPA, DHA, and other so-called uh, fatty acids in the supplement that they utilized to yield this particular outcome itself. Wonderful, simple, clean cut, easy to understand, done in people, so you have a nice, nice transition. And again, with most studies, the operative word is always may. Uh, because researchers don't like to necessarily draw a direct causal relationship until they have further confirming information in larger studies or redundant studies until they feel confident. So, again, may reduce cellular aging. Wonderful outcome. Opens up a whole new dimension in reference to the benefits of omega-3s themselves. But, as usual, gratitude, thank you. Again, any of you want to visit us on Saturday night for the data analytic part, again, it's always open to you. A little technical, but last week we went through looking at a correlation between uh, disease transmission in reference to uh, COVID and states that have high transmission rates or infection rates compared to states which have low pandemic mitigation restrictions and so on and so forth to see if there was any relationship or correlation between those increase in infection rates in those very strict pandemic uh, states and those neighboring states to whether they were experiencing any of the same outcome in reference to heightened infection rates. But primarily omega-3, wonderful in reducing cortisol, helping with the anti-inflammatory proteins, keeping pro-inflammatory proteins down, and keeping your Telomeres, telomeres, safe and telomerase levels elevated so you have a good, good, good profile in order to handle whatever the stress of the day may be. Gratitude, thank you for off the channel signing off and look forward to you all once again next week. See you then.